Hello, two seven segment displays, four digit seven segment displays. Now the giveaway are the two dots in the middle. So the sort of uh, time colon. Um, yes, these are clocks. Okay, partial reveal. On the side, they have USB type C connectors. So they're powered by uh, USB type C, five volts, I think. I don't think it's uh, higher voltage than that. So I'll get a couple of uh, cables and I'll get a couple of power sources and we'll power these up and see if they've got the right time. Right, a couple of USB uh, power banks here. So let's plug the first one in. And, oh no, I want to put it this way around so that it tips forwards. Uh, this one is blue, flashes some dashes and then does a bit of that. Oh, and it says zero. <laughs> That's interesting. That seems to have lost its clock setting, which is interesting. And I'll come back to that. Right, let's plug the other one in. Uh, let's hope this one comes on with the right time. This one probably is more likely to do so. Okay, 13.55. Let's just check that against this. Uh, so the time on my phone is 13.56. So this one, oh, 13.56 now. So this one's slightly out and this one's gone completely bonkers. Hmm. Just going to try repowering this because I can't see why it would have lost all its settings. That's rather strange. See if it can get the time. No, it's definitely lost it. Okay, we'll come back to that. So now let's take a look at the backs of these, which have a little circuit board on them, and see how they differ. Uh, I probably should unplug them for this because what I don't want to happen is they sort of touch together and uh, things get shorted out. So I'll unplug this and this one, and we're getting close on the back side of these two clocks. And these are they. Um, okay, so the first thing to notice, there's an ESP8266 on here with a little crystal oscillator there, um, a memory chip sitting next to it. And they're identical. In fact, the PCBs are identical between these two clocks, even though they work in completely different ways. Um, there's a chip here. I'll get onto macro in a moment and we'll get right up close to it. But it looks like the uh, four segment LED driver. The, I suspect it's the same chip on this one underneath the battery. Now this one needs a battery because that's what keeps the real time clock chip, which is this chip here, which is interesting. It's very tall. So we'll get the part number of that in a moment. Yeah, it keeps that real time clock chip running. This one, of course, doesn't need a real time clock chip because the ESP8266 gets time from the internet, from an NTP server. And it does seem that it seems to have lost its ability to do that. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, otherwise on this board, there's nothing on the other side. I've sort of looked through that gap and can't see anything on the other side. Um, all there is is a regulator here. Now the regulator has been ground, the top's been ground off it, which is really bizarre because, I mean, what's it going to be? A 3.3 volt regulator? There's really nothing special about that, is there? Um, there are two buttons here for setup. This one is slightly more comprehensive in terms of setup because you have to set the uh, minutes, hours. Uh, I'm not sure about date. I don't think it displays date, so I don't think you set that up. But uh, yeah, you have to set the time on that one. This one, of course, you don't set the time. You set whether it's in 12 or 24 hour format, but it gets the time from Tinternet. Okay, in macro, the real time clock chip is an R8025. So we'll take a look at that. Um, there's the ESP8266. How close can I get to that? Yeah, you can actually see that it's an ESP8266. And although they've ground this memory chip, they haven't really done it well enough because I can see that that says 25040. And that is a 4K bit uh, serially 
E squared prom, um, which is 512 bytes of memory. So that's going to hold things like the NTP server, IP address, other bits and pieces. Not entirely sure why it's there on the real time clock version because it doesn't need any internet stuff. Because this one, although it uses an ESP8266, it doesn't go to the internet to get time. So they're only using this as a microcontroller. They're not using any of the Wi Fi functionality of this chip. So they must have to store something in there. I'm not entirely sure what, but yeah, certainly the Wi Fi one stores more. Now, this one. You can't see the ESP8266 thing quite as well. And they fully ground the top of this chip. So I only know what it is from looking at that other one. Um, the LED driver is a TM1650. So I'll have to take a look at all these um, chips to see what we're looking at. So the TM1650 is uh, an ASIC, effectively an application specific integrated circuit. It's an LED driver control and keyboard scanning. So that would scan those two buttons and also drive um, eight segments, four bits or seven segment, four bits. Now, when they say bits, I think they mean digits here. So seven, eight segment, four digits. So it can drive the uh, the full stop the decimal point as well now whether it can drive the little colon in the middle i don't know right um now this is interesting it's got um oh where was it yes provides eight level brightness control now that's interesting because if we go back to the uh clocks yes back on this uh clock module this button here uh, the one right on the corner takes you from LED level four, five, six, seven, and eight. And the thing just gets brighter as you go through them. And then if I go back to LED one, we're on level one. So if the designer of this was sensible, and I'm sure he is, because this is, uh, or she, um, this is a very sensible looking design, particularly because you've got these two clocks essentially on the same PCB. Um, they would have used the TM, whatever that chip was, um, to take you through those different brightness levels. And the block diagram here shows that indeed these are digits one, two, three, and four. Uh, decimal point, and then you've got segments A to G. Now, we don't specifically have drivers for the little colon, uh, which is flashing, in the middle of the LED, so maybe that's done uh, separately with an output from the microcontroller. I squared C interface here to interface with the ESP8266. Now moving on to the real-time clock module. This is the, uh, well it's marked R8025, it appears to be an RX8025 by Epson, interestingly. Now I'm just going to scroll right down to the bottom of this because I want to see the actual chip um drawing and yeah you can see here that we've got this unusual tall chip I'm not sure what's in the top of that let me read a bit of this data sheet see if i can work that out i don't think it's a battery because the module itself has a battery uh, maybe it's a capacitor maybe it's a heater to stabilize the circuitry but then that would use a lot of power wouldn't it let's have a look Yes, I think what it is, it's going to be this 32.768 kilohertz quartz oscillator sitting in the top of that chip. Um, so this is an I squared C chip again. Um, it's got all the registers for hours, minutes, seconds, calendar, year, month, date, day in BCD code, 12 and 24 hour modes. Uh, auto calibration of leap years up to 2099. <laughs> but not beyond, well, who needs it? I don't think I do. Uh, Built-in high precision clock. Uh, anyway, lots of stuff. 32.768 kilohertz clock output, uh, CMOS output. Now here we are, um, 
wide clock retention voltage range 1.15 volts to 5.5 and it draws 0.48 microamps so half a microamp what's that 500 nanoamps um at three volts typical and then yeah there's lots of block diagram stuff here and stuff related to i squared c as well um, right now, this is the uh, well. Now this is SPI serial E squared prom, not I squared C. So using different pins on the microcontroller, presumably we've got an eighty two five zero four zero. Now that's four K bits, organized as five hundred twelve bytes of electrically erasable, programmable read-only memory E E prom. Um, so SPI not I squared C. Oh, block write protection. What else have we got? Uh, one million write cycles, data retention, a hundred years. Again, not something I need to worry too much about. So I think that's all the major chips covered. There's not much point bringing up a data sheet on the ESP8266. Uh, it's massive and complicated. Really, for me, the issue is why has this one stopped talking to wi-fi and is now not showing the correct time um does appear to be i mean is that uh, is it going to the internet successfully i presume that's what those dashes are yeah we'll have to uh, get into this this one also has the uh, led level up to eight and down to level one. Now, if you press and hold the second button, you can adjust the alarms. Um, EE, which is, I think, the time zone. So you can go, oh, okay. And then FF parameter is either 24 or 12 hour clock. So I prefer 24. Uh, then it should go back to the clock, but we're not getting the right time. So now I need to get my tablet out and see um, why this is not syncing or linking to the NTP time server. Right, I'm going to be able to show bits of this because you don't show your Wi-Fi apparently. Um, so this is the home page. You go to 192.168.4.1 but you've got to set your Wi-Fi to config something with lots of numbers. You'll see it in the um, listing on AliExpress, which I'll put in the description below. Configure Wi-Fi. I can't really do that on screen. Configure the NTP server. So you've got all these. Now I tried this NTSC AC.CN uh, and it didn't really work. Um, how about timeapple.com? Doesn't seem that you can just press on these. So I think I'm gonna have to type it in. Uh, let's take that off time dot apple dot com uh, save that oh that has now come up with the correct time so maybe there was a problem with the ntp server um so you also have if you go back to the home page a system setup let me just check that uh, yeah, this one's fine. Okay, so you can enable or disable summertime. So 1427 is the correct time. If I disable summertime, it should go to the wrong time. Yeah, that's now saying 1327. So I do want to enable summertime. Auto brightness, I don't think there is an auto brightness. Uh, yeah, you can set the brightness level actually. So let's set it to level, I don't know, eight, the brightest and send that. And that's gone to the brightest level. We can check that because if I press the button, it goes back to level one. Um, time zone, you can go up to plus 12 and down to minus 12. Because I'm in the UK, we are on time zone zero and time mode 24 hour or 12 hour send so that's now in 12 hour which i don't like so let's go back to 24 hour uh, and send and that immediately goes 14 28 so this is the setup that's the ip address you use 
but you do have to set your Wi-Fi to um, the access point name of this, which is Conflig something. There's a load of letters and numbers after it. And you've got three basic pages for setting it up. Uh, one which, where you put your Wi-Fi uh, SSID in and your password. And then the other two are the system setup. And, oh, what was the, the other one? Let's go back to the home page. Uh, oh, yeah, the NTP server, which may have been the problem. Anyway, it's now looking at Apple's time NTP server. And I'll just go through the setting modes on this one. Uh, press and hold this second button. That lets you change the hour. Uh, now I've got to go all the way back around to 14. I can take it off the uh, other one. Then you set the minutes, won't bother with that. You set the seconds. Now I'm not sure how you show seconds. I don't think you can show seconds. So you'd have to uh, find a clock that is internet linked and showing seconds. Uh, alarm zero. EE is the time zone relative to Greenwich Mean Time. And FF is 24 hour or 12 hour clock. And so there they are. Um, this one, the settings, it doesn't have hours, minutes and seconds, obviously, because it's Wi-Fi. So you're just setting the time zone and summertime. Ah, oh, I don't think you can set summertime on these buttons. Uh, and you're setting 12 or 24 hours. Interestingly, these get really hot. It's the ESP8266, which is warm. And it's pretty warm, which is why these don't have a built-in battery other than the keep the RTC chip alive battery. That one don't think is getting quite as warm, which is not surprising because probably half the ESP8266 is powered down because we're not using any of the Wi-Fi part of it. But that's it. That's uh, two little clock modules. I'll put links to these on AliExpress in the description below. But I think for this video, that's probably about it. Cheerio.